Hi everyone, it's me, Tim. Today I want to talk about combat, like technical how to code combat kind of thing. Like I'm going to talk data structures and event handling. I wasn't going to do this, but I've done some technical talks in the past and people really liked it. And I was trying to think of what I could talk about that was general enough that it would be applicable to a lot of you, but at the same time really interesting. And I hit upon the combat stuff because A, whoa, okay, maybe I should start editing. I'm going to leave that in there. <laughs> yes. Um, I, I want to talk about combat because A, every RPG has combat, and B, I did this a bunch of different ways. I did it one way for Bard's Tale Construction Set and another way for Fallout, even though they were both turn-based, and then another way for Arcanum, and I finally settled on this method, which I really like. Um, for the programmers out there, it's one based on a manager for combat data structures, which I call combat packets, and then an event handler. So... Why did I do it this way? Why did this become my favorite? Because making the packets global and having them controlled by a manager meant there was far less memory fragmentation because things are going to be requesting these packets a lot and freeing them up a lot. And as I'll explain as I go through it, a lot of things want to see these packets more than just the attacker. So making it something that exists outside of the attacker that can be referenced and passed around just makes things a lot easier. I use the event handler because a lot of independent systems often want to know about these events and through this combat packet can be easily passed all the information they'd ever want to know. Of course, all the different combat routines want to know, but so does UI, so does the sound system, and those are independent of combat, but often need to know information like who's the attacker, who's the victim, what's the victim's armor. What is the a weapon that's being used in the attack? So it can decide how to display things in the UI and how to make sounds. So I'm going to walk through how I did this in, I think, everything after Arcanum. So let's, let's start. First of all, there's a starting event where some attacker decides, I want to do an attack. Maybe it's a turn-based system and it becomes their turn. Maybe it's an, a real-time system and the AI said, hey, it's time to do an attack. Maybe a cooldown happened. Maybe another event happened that hit them. Like, hey, you were just attacked by somebody. What do you want to do? I want to attack back. This is the point where the attacker asks the combat manager, please give me a combat packet. And the manager goes, here you go. The manager is the one that controls the memory for it, probably initialized it before it turned it passed it over so everything is appropriately initialized to a zero, null, nothing value. During that start event, that's when the attacker is going to fill in as many fields as he already knows about. Now the, the packet has fields for like who's being attacked. There's a target array. Keep in mind, and I, I'm being very careful, the target might be a creature, it might be a location, because you throw a fireball at a location, and then it hits a bunch of targets. So what I usually had was a target field, which could be a object or a location, and then victims, which was an array of objects of everything that got hurt. There's other fields on this packet, like what's the full amount of damage that got rolled by the attack? What was the damage done to each target? Some flags we need to keep about the attack state. Those will be filled in as we go along, as it gets past to different things. So, like I said, the target might be an object or location, but that object might not be a creature. You might be throwing fine trap or uh, open lock. So the object might be a creature or it might be a chest or a door or a lock or a trap. So you have to use data structures. You might want to use a union, the programmers, or you might have a generic object pointer that can point to a creature or a door or an object. So here at the start, it fill you fill in whatever you want to, whatever you know. You don't know all of it. For example, 
maybe the attacker knows who they want to an attack. Like they know that this person just hit me. I want to attack them. But they don't know what ability they want to use. So there may be a function saying, what abilities do I have available to attack this attacker? This, this person, I'm the attacker. Or you may already decide what ability you want to do, but you now you want to know where to throw it. For example, you may have a wizard NPC who basically casts fireballs into the combat when, every time his cooldown happens. So his cooldown happens and he knows it's time for him to throw fireball, but where to throw it? So there's probably a function called saying, if I threw this spell, where would I throw it? Or who would I target? Sometimes you may need to decide both. Like in a turn-based combat, it's your turn now. Who do you want to attack? What, spell, what ability do you want to use? There may be a, a method for deciding both where you go, what should I do? And it may recommend a person to attack. And then you can say, what ability should I use? Or it may say, I think it's time to use this ability. Uh, who should I th use it on? So you may have all three of those methods available. For this ability, who do I attack? Who, I'm attacking this person, what ability do I want to use, or hey, just tell me what to do. So the attacker fills in whatever they can already do in that packet. Um, I'm also going to note for optimization purposes, here's where you do anything that's expensive, and I'll talk about that later. If you do something frequently and it's expensive to calculate, you do it here. But like I've said in another video, you optimize later. So at this point, the attacker's done, and it it tells the combat manager, uh, here's my attack, my field and attack packet, let's go. Basically, events get queued up. There is a an attack begin event. This is where the animation for the attack starts. Maybe a sound happens. Maybe skill, the skill roll. Maybe it's determined here whether he hits or not because maybe he does a slightly different animation when he misses or maybe the weapon can jam and you have to know that before anything starts. Maybe not. Maybe the skill happens when the actual... Uh, hit happens on the uh, on the target. There may be an event for projectile launch because remember, if you have a gun or a bow, its animation begins and there's a particular time in the projectile actually goes. Notice that that projectile launch may be an, an, an event on the animation, which is another reason to use combat packets. All the animation event will do is come back and tell the attacker, you're playing an animation and this event just happened. And you know that event is, I've got, to, I've got to create a projectile for my attack. Well, guess what? You have this packet lying around, and it's got you as the attacker, and it has the weapon you're using to attack or the ability. You know what, you can figure out what to make. You do that. So you create a projectile. Maybe another sound gets fired. A lot of people are listening to these events. Now there's an attack in progress. There may be some regular method that gets called every tick, every frame, to see if a projectile should be moved, if you need to check on its progress, um, you know, to maybe it hits something or maybe it's supposed to make a sound as it goes along. Again, another reason that that packet should not be on the attacker, that it should be accessible to anybody. Because here's a, a, a frame rate or a heartbeat based method that's being called that may not be on the attacker. So the projectile gets moved, the sword gets swung, these things happen. You may, it, maybe the person has an, uh, a globe of invulnerability around them that you actually stop before the hit of the attack, that you stop early. This is where you check something like that. So then finally, another event that happens is the attack is hit. Now, you may or may not know whether it's successful. Like I said, you may, not, you may have rolled it earlier or you may not. This is where you'd roll it. You have events that you call on the attacker, your attack hit. You have events that you call on each target. Again, a good reason this packet isn't on the attacker. Hey, you were just hit by this attack. Those individual targets may decide, here's how much damage was done, uh, but I have this damage resistance, so I have to roll a saving throw. This is where all that's done. Another reason to have this in a packet is some spells or abilities may have something unusual, like it's an area of effect and there's a chance one person in it gets stunned, or it stuns one up to three people in in the group. This is where you kind of have to have a packet so that you can decide, do those rolls or whatever, and then up a counter or set a flag in that packet so that once it's reached that limit, nobody else gets stunned or whatever the effect is going to be. Or if you determine that it's an attack miss, you may just call a function attack miss or you may set out another event because other things want to know that it was a miss. Maybe your UI 
does something different on a miss than a hit, or there's a different sound that's needed. Again, the attacker gets the miss event, and every target that could have been hit but was missed gets that event. Or if it's like a fireball and some people made their save and some didn't, some of those targets will get you were hit by the fireball and the other gets you were missed by the fireball. So they all know that. Then there's an attack finishing event, which again is frame rate based. Maybe the projectile that missed keeps moving. Maybe an animation has to be completed. Maybe there's something that gets triggered by the hit that needs to play out. That's where that's done. Finally, there's an, another event, attack completed. Everything's over. The attack is over. This is when this event gets happened. This is things that tell event, uh, abilities your cooldown can start. You were just used. Your cooldown can start now. This is also where the packet gets released back to the manager. Maybe it reinitializes it before it puts it away. Maybe not. I usually initialize it when I need it. But it sticks it back on the queue of here are packets available for me to hand out. Again, this is the kind of stuff I did when memory was important. But if you're using something like Unity and you don't use a packet manager like this and you just make a new one whenever you feel like it and you free it up whenever you feel like it, eventually... Like, you can force um, garbage collection on Unity, but if you don't do it frequently enough, it will decide to do it on its own, and it's going to decide to do it in a time you don't want. So maybe it's not when you're loading a level where no one will notice a hiccup of a tenth of a second. It might do it in the middle of a big attack animation where that hiccup is noticeable, or your frame rate takes a dump because it decides to spend, you know, 100 milliseconds doing a garbage collection. This is why I always try to... Do that stuff myself. I don't, I'm not going to leave it to Unity or Unreal to do that for me. Also, I mentioned optimization. I may think of places to optimize while I'm doing this, but I, you do optimization afterwards. One thing I mentioned was, let's say there is something that in the attack packet that's kind of expensive to calculate. Maybe it's what the target's armor is. And and you need to look it up because the sound system looks it up to decide what sound to play because a sword on leather sounds different than a sword on plate mail. Maybe it's the combat resolution itself that says I need to know what the damage resistance was on the victim's armor. Maybe of the 15 or so events that this packet flows through, 10 of them are looking up the victim's armor. You may, during optimization phase, go, mm, that's expensive. I will look it up once in combat start and store it. But maybe... Of those 15 events, only three or four do a lookup, and it's not that expensive. Just look it up. That's why you save optimizations till later, and you decide to do just the ones you need. Because if you over-optimize, you're not only you're wasting time that you could have spent fixing bugs that are important, but your optimizations may do nothing. They don't help the frame rate. They don't reduce memory. They did nothing. So I just want to throw that in there because that was an example of how I do this. Anyway. So to summarize, the way I've always loved doing combat is there's a combat packet that contains all the data about a single attack of an attacker on one or more targets. That gets created by a combat manager who handles it independently of any of those attackers or targets, it can be referenced by all the events, and the event handlers happen all the, handle all the stages that that attack goes through. Anyway, it took me years to figure that out. I used to do it like in, with the much more non-event-based code, the very deterministic coding. That was a mistake. This is the way I do it now. So that was a bit of a technical discussion. Hope people like it. Hope people like listening to it. I can do more of those. Let me know.